Don't you love it when people combine things to make your life a little easier and maybe a little more convenient? I sure do. Today we're going to be looking at Power XL's Microwave Air Fryer Plus. And I think that plus maybe means an oven because it can bake and broil as well. That's what we're going to look at today. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for You. My channel is dedicated to reviewing mostly as seen on TV items. I look at some consumer gadgets, other household items. Once in a while I do a little bit of a DIY just because I like to. If that interests you, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and click the bell below. That way you're notified every time I release a video just like this one. Oh yeah, one more thing. Don't forget to check down the description for my social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I would love it if you would follow me there too. Now, let's take a closer look at this Power XL Microwave Air Fryer Plus which cost around 230 bucks if you count tax. It's like 200 plus tax. That's a lot of money. Let's see if it's any good. All right, so here at first look, this looks like a typical microwave. And I like that, right? Because the whole point of me getting this is I want to replace the microwave in my house, set it right on the counter where my current microwave is, and then also not have to lug around an air fryer. So let's see if this will do that for me. All right, first time opening the door, here we go. Okay, so I didn't expect to see all that stuff in there, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'll pull all this out, let you know what it is. I do see some directions in here, so I'm gonna definitely read through that, and then let's get cooking. So the first thing you have to do, well, after we took out everything, is we have to assemble our microwave. Now, this piece right here, which I would have rather already been installed, we have to install right in here into this slot. There is only one direction in which it can go, so just make sure you put it in correctly. As you can see, I had to spin it around a while just to get it in there. All right, so this next piece goes in. This is your regular turntable for a microwave. I will say the directions told us to wash everything first. So I've already done that. All right, so this looks just like my microwave and I'm excited about that. So what I'm gonna do is you have to burn off any kind of oil from the factory. So they recommend just setting it up to cook and go. So let's do that right now. Other air fryers that I've used, you're required to burn off the oil. So this one just told you to turn it on and cook for a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, the directions from my caloric and that actually tells you to have it on, they say steak mode, which is really air fry. You're gonna go as high as you can. This unit only goes to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I'm gonna hit confirm. And the caloric said, burn it off for 20 minutes. So let's just see what happens when we run this on the air fry mode for 20 minutes. So my first use of this, it sounds like a regular microwave. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, I do like that it's quiet. I'm actually interested to see if this is gonna heat up my house. All right, so it's hard to get a picture of this without reflecting the background, but there is a faint light on the inside. It's actually really difficult to see, but I guess it is some sort of light. I just wanted to show you that here. So a little over four minutes into burning off the oil, and I'm gonna let you know that it does stink. Like I can smell something that does not smell very good. So I'm guessing that means it's burning off the oils, but just so you know, you may encounter that as well. All right, so I just finished burning off the oil on this thing, and just like I said before, it was a smelly mess. I ended up having to leave the room just because I couldn't tolerate the smell. Anyway, so I think this video is gonna be fun because I have a, a highly reflective surface here. You could actually see my stove in the background. I was reading through the directions, and this part frustrated me a little bit, okay? So I know most air fryers need about three to four inches all the way around away from any cabinets or walls just to prevent any fires or allow for airflow. Well, this particular unit says it needs three inches on the left side, three inches on the right side, three inches behind, and they actually want three inches in the front here. So just in case you open it, you don't spill anything. But here's the kicker. It requires 12 inches above it. That's a lot of free space that this needs. And that's pretty frustrating because the place I have this going is actually underneath the cabinet and I definitely don't have that kind of opening. Before we move on, let's set the clock. So there's actually a clock timer button right here. I'll zoom in so you can see that. See how it says clock timer? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit that button. And now you can see I have four 
zero. So I'm going to turn this until it gets to my time. So it's actually 9.30 here. So I get to the hour of 9. I hit clock timer again. And now I'm going to go to 30. And there we go. Now my time is set. I wanted to show you some of the other things that came with it. I have this air frying rack that's got, well, two different levels, right? I also have this baking pan. They absolutely warn, do not put this baking pan in when you're using the microwave function, okay? That makes sense, you're not supposed to put metal in there. Anyway, so when you're air frying or baking, you can have this up or you can flip it around and have it lower. So just depending on the height of your baking needs. All right, so I've let this thing cool down pretty well. Um, it's been a few hours because it was really warm after I did the initial um, burning off the, the oils and such. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test some popcorn first. So typically I don't use the popcorn buttons because I don't trust them. Um, this popcorn says you're supposed to pop it between a minute and a half and two and a half minutes. Um, I'm gonna hit the popcorn button. Uh, that says 2.75, I actually think mine is 3.2. So. I'm still going to listen here just to hear the uh, pops, but let's see if we can start this. I tell you what, it sure looks like it's popping. It sounds like it's popping. It smells like it's popping. So I'm sure excited to see what happens. So I just stopped it about five seconds before it was going to beep because the popcorn stopped popping, right? So I don't want to overcook it. So let's check this out. Oh yeah, it looks good. All right, can you see that? It's evenly popped. There's no burn. It looks good to me. Let's pour it into a bowl. Yep, it is just as delicious as I thought it would be. Okay, so we're gonna continue using the microwave function. Right now I have a cup of coffee. It was warm this morning. Um, it's definitely a lot colder than I like. It's reading in right here at about mm, 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see if that, look at that on the Celsius. We're looking at about mm, 24. So it's kind of a cold cup of coffee. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna microwave this. There is a setting on the microwave for microwave items. It says micro menu. So I'm going to click it and C1 is actually what I want. That's the beverage function. So let's confirm. And I have actually eight ounces. Let's confirm. Now a minute and 40 seconds. Let's check back in when that's done. Now I will say this has already gotten a little louder than before, but we'll check in at the end of this time. All right, so it's over. It actually didn't beep, it just stopped. I might have accidentally turned the beep off by hitting this button earlier. Oh, that's true, that's what I did. So if you notice this button, I didn't know what that was because I couldn't get the sticker off, but this turns off my tone, okay? So if you don't like the beep, well, turn that off. Now the, the directions do tell you, be careful because this may not look like it's boiling, but it could be really, really hot. And they actually call it eruptive boiling I think where it doesn't look like it's boiling but it's really hot and so just in a minute and a half like a microwave this heated up my coffee pretty fast now it's about 150 maybe 152 on the Fahrenheit and on our Celsius did I click that you're looking at about 67 66 that kind of thing all right so it's definitely a lot warmer um, and that's what we expected all right, the last of our microwave tests, I'm just gonna do a TV dinner or a microwavable dinner. I'm supposed to heat this for four and a half minutes. Um, there is, There aren't any buttons, right? So I can't just type. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start turning this. It looks like it goes by 10 second increments. I've gotta go up to about four and a half right there. I'm gonna hit confirm and let it roll. I tell you what, this noise is getting louder and louder. And so as I've been looking around it, I, I see if I lift up on this end a little here, the noise gets quieter. I don't like the vibrating noise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prop a rock right under here um, so I can sort of eliminate that. Much better. 
All right, the microwave beeped this time. I'm sorry I didn't catch it on camera, but it did beep. Let's check it out. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. I do feel as though it's hot on the bottom and that's the important part because that's where the liquid is. I'm gonna put this on, um, open this up and mix it all together and just see if it's warm enough. But you know what, just from the plastic, that's very hot. Do you see that steam coming off? You know what, so far I am impressed. The microwave function works perfectly. So now that we've really rocked out the microwave portion of this and we saw that it really worked, let's try to bake in it, right? Because I wanna know if I can bake in this thing. So I'm getting ready to bake these crescent rolls at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for between nine and 12 minutes. So I'm just gonna put it in and go. Okay, so I was able to find that you do a preheat just like you do a regular oven. We're gonna click bake. This defaults to 350. I'm actually gonna put it to 375 because that's what I am cooking on, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna hit the confirm button. And now this is telling me 30 minutes. I'm gonna go down to 12 minutes and I'm supposed to hit confirm and it's supposed to start the preheating process. So I wanna see if my timer starts going down because it definitely is supposed to tell me when it's done preheating. So let's start the preheating now. All right, so this fan blinking here is telling me that's preheating. Here is my indicator here. You can see I only have two dots. So I want that to be all the way up to where it's heated up and then I can put in my crescent rolls. All right, so the unit just beeped. It's fully heated up. You can see that bar. This fan is no longer blinking and it has my 12 minute mark. I'm gonna open this up, put in my crescent rolls. Ooh, it's warm in there. Close this up, hit confirm to start. I'm gonna watch these because 12 minutes is the maximum time and I surely don't wanna burn them. All right, so just over 10 minutes and our crescents are cooked deliciously. They're golden on the top, golden on the bottom. I like it. So tell me, what do you think about this all-in-one unit, a microwave, an air fryer, an oven? What do you think about this? Let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Now, let's go do some air frying. All right, so I'm gonna air fry some tater tots. I don't have any French fries here. I'm gonna really have it on the same setting as the French fries. Um, and I guess there's also a setting for nuggets. I'm gonna try it in here on this upper rack. I'm not sure how it's gonna go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit air fry. And this says 400, I definitely want it on. You know what, let me try the air fry menu. Chicken nuggets is air fry 03, AF03. So I'm gonna try it on there. And that's about the same as it would be for French fries, 20 minutes. So let's let that roll and see how they look in 20 minutes. All right, so we still have about two and a half minutes left, but I think I'm gonna take these out of the oven or the air fryer. The reason is, is because they are all golden brown. I was actually impressed that, you know what, they're actually that same color on the bottom. Typically on an air fryer, you get it on one side or the other, but these cooked really, really well in just about 18 minutes. So I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I actually put the air fry rack over top of this cooking pan. I'm gonna put this in the air fryer. I think it's like AF11, calls for two slices of pizza. Now this is small pizza, so I will keep an eye on it, but let's try this out. All right, we're on AF11. Let's cook. All right, so I just took a peek at the pizza and it's looking delicious, but it's getting kind of crispy. So I wanted to take it out. I got about two minutes left here on the countdown, but we are gonna be done. All right, so it did a good job of crisping up that pepperoni. What I like is, the dish I have underneath here, the pan actually caught the grease, so it keeps my unit clean. Very good. Do you see that deliciousness? And even the bottom is cooked, and these were already cooked pieces of pizza. I was just reheating them in the air fryer. Delicious. 
In this video, we've been talking about the Power XL Microwave Air Fryer Plus, and that plus, of course, is the oven feature. Now, let's talk about it. Did the microwave work? It sure did, and I was really impressed with it. Did the oven part work? Absolutely. I've never actually made croissants that were that good. Normally, I burn them, or they're really, really dark. Now, did the air fryer part work? It sure did. So all three functions of this actually work. Now, the frustrating part for me is, like I said at the beginning, I bought this to replace my microwave. The only problem is I don't have a whole lot of room above my microwave. I need this just to slip in, and this thing needs 12 inches above. So right away, that sort of eliminates the purpose I was gonna do. So my thoughts, if you have a microwave stove and air fryer that you use and work well for you, you probably don't need this. Now, that being said, if you're looking for maybe a microwave and an air fryer, this is a really good unit. I just want you to know about the limitations. Three inches on the side, three inches on the back, three inches on the front, and a foot on the top. This was Jeff with Jeff Reviews for You. As always, thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. Oh yeah, one more thing. So in this video, I could not handle that hot food bringing in and out with my bare hands. So I ended up using my silicone glove mitts and it's actually a review I did not that long ago. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link that video right up here and I would love it if you would click on this review. By the magic of the internet, when you click this link, I'm gonna join you at that video. So go ahead, click it, it's safe, I promise.